Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to create these 3D buttons using HTML and CSS. Now, we can see here that these buttons are quite colorful, so I imagine that um, they might be useful for retro style designs or if you're building a website for a small business, something along those lines, or if you just want these funky looking colors on your website. Now, this is going to support both an anchor tag or a link tag, as well as a button tag. So you can use these interchangeably. You're also able to define custom colors if you want to, and when you click on the button, you're gonna get a nice little change of form there just to indicate that the button was in fact clicked on. So all of this here is really easy to do. Now, heading inside the text editor for this file or for the file we're gonna be working on looks like this. So we have the index.html. I've simply got a linked style sheet right here with nothing inside the body. As for the style sheet, it's gonna start off looking like this. I've got a background on the HTML and of course a margin, and this is all personal, it's up to you. I've included it for stylistic purposes. Now, of course there is no buttons in this body because the page I was referring to was this one right here. So of course, starting from scratch to create what I just showed you right here. Now, the very first step of this video is gonna to be to include Google fonts on the website, okay? Because um, I'm gonna be using, or I'm gonna be showing you how to use Google fonts here to import this font face for these buttons, okay? So if you head down below in the description, I've left a link to Google fonts, and basically there is a bunch of open source fonts here for you to choose from for your website if you would like to go down that path. Now you want to make sure that you choose a sans serif or a display font for this particular scenario because you want thick letters for your 3D buttons. Um, I've actually gone ahead and chosen a font here. I'll just inspect it. Um, we can see the font is called Boogaloo. So I'm going to do a search here for Boogaloo just to get the exact same font that I showed you in the uh, you know, introduction. And I've chosen this font right here. You can, of course, choose whichever font you want. Once you've chosen the font, you want to scroll down and simply choose uh, select regular 400 or whatever it might be for the font. Then in the top right corner in the view selected families, you can simply copy the link tag right here. And once you've pasted this inside the head, you're ready to use that font for your website. I'll paste it right up here. So later on, when, you know, once we get to styling up the button, we of course are going to take advantage of this font right here, but it is ready to go for us to use. Now, what's the first step for creating these buttons? Well, it's gonna be to uh, write the HTML for a single button first, okay? So right down here, we're going to head inside the body and create a new anchor tag. So we're gonna be starting with an anchor tag here. Let's make the href a hash. Of course, make this whatever link you want it to be. Inside the anchor tag, we're gonna say something like see more. That's just our button text, okay? Now it's important we include a class here. The class is going to be called button just like that, a simple class, okay? Now, as for the CSS, let's hop down here and target the class of button. So the first step inside the CSS is gonna to be to define two new variables. These variables are going to be the background color and the shadow color for the button. So in this case here, in the example, we've got a blue, then a darker blue for the background, okay? Or the shadow, right? So let's hop inside here. We can say dash dash background dash color and make this 005A double F. If you haven't seen this syntax before, this right here is simply defining a variable in CSS. You can then reference this background color variable name in the CSS file to of course reuse this value. And we're gonna be seeing how this comes in handy very shortly. Let's duplicate this line here, then say background color dash dark for the dark variation. And in this case here, I'm gonna simply hover over the dark or the normal version and then slide this down to choose a darker font or sorry, a darker color just like that, okay? Cool. So this right here, as we can see in the HTML, has actually done nothing for us so far. We've only got the text from the HTML document. So let's begin to add some styles to the button itself. 
First off, we're gonna give this a display of inline block. This allows us to, uh, you know, uh, find it easier to work with uh, margins and padding. So we can just say here a margin of zero, then eight pixels for the left and right, and a padding of 10px and then 16px. So 10px top and bottom, 16px uh, left and right. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we can see here upon inspecting the button, we've got that padding and the margin, which is actually quite hard to see because of the background color, but there's definitely a margin right there, very faint. So we have the margin and the padding uh, set up. Let's now move forward to the font family. So um, in this case here, it's gonna be set to uh, Boogaloo and then cursive. Now, I got this value from the Google Fonts website when I chose the font. So if you scroll down on the right side here, you can see you've got this CSS rules to specify families. I'll say font family, Boogaloo, then cursive. Okay, so of course cursive av uh, Sorry, as the backup. And going back in the text editor, we can also set a font size of 24px and a color of black. Let's save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, and we get something like this, okay? Let's now add some more styles to the button. Let's give this a text decoration of none here, as well as a border of none and an outline of none. Now, both the border and outline uh, properties are not going to do anything for us at this moment because we're using an anchor tag for the button, but if you were using a button tag for the button, then those two CSS rules would, go, uh, you know, would actually remove your border and outline, okay? Cool, let's hop down here. Same goes for the cursor. By adding the cursor here, it means the button, if you're using a button, will actually show the you know little hand cursor as opposed to um, you know just the regular uh, pointer, okay? Now, the big one here is gonna be setting the background. So the background here, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, uh, background color is gonna be set to var and then pass through here dash dash background color. So now, of course, it's gonna grab the background color set right up here and make that the actual background color of the button. Alongside this, we're going to be setting a box shadow of 6px, 6ps, 0, and then var, once again, this time choosing var, background color dark. Now, I did actually uh, make a mistake with the color here. You wanna instead make this a white as opposed to a black, okay? Cool. Let's save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, and we get something like this. We're basically done with the button, or almost, okay? Now let me explain how we got that background shadow for the button, all right? So going back inside here, essentially this box shadow said 6px from the, uh, on, the, on the x axis and 6px on the y axis, I wanna go down, or right and then down respectively. So six pixels right and six pixels down, okay? Then zero for the feathering. In a standard box shadow, this might be set to five or 10 pixels, but in our case, we're saying zero to give us that rounded effect. If I make this a 10 PX instead, for example, refresh, we get that blurry background. But of course, like I said, giving it zero feathering gives us the box or nicely squared off effect. And of course the background color dark gives us that dark background color. So it's actually quite straightforward. Now when it gets, sorry, uh, where it gets interesting is when you are having the, you know, subtle uh, change of form here to give us that visual of pressing the button. So the way this works is actually with um, tr uh, a transform. So let me show you this right now. Let's hop down here. We're gonna target button colon active. So targeting the active pseudo class on this button and active is gonna fire off whenever the user clicks on the button or holds it down, right? Cool. For this, it's gonna be quite straightforward. Only, only two rules here. We're gonna say transform, translate X. We're gonna say two pixels. Also, translate Y, two pixels. This just means, much like the box shadow, this means take the whole button, including the box shadow, and then move it two pixels on the X axis, so towards the right, and two pixels on the on the y-axis, other words, down. So two pixels right, two pixels down. Let's save this, go back in the browser, refresh, click on the button, 
and the whole thing moves down and to the right two pixels as we expect. The problem is here, the whole box shadow also moves down. So how do you fix that? Well, you simply cancel out that movement or that translation, I guess you could say, for the box shadow. Okay, how do we do that? Well, go back in the text editor, go say here, box dash shadow, then say 4px, 4px, zero, and then var background color dark. So it's the exact same format as the original box shadow, but this one uses four pixels as opposed to six. Now the math right here is quite clear. Essentially you want these numbers to add up. So four plus two is six. You want your translation, or you want to subtract your translate, so two pixels from your original of six, and that's what you want for the box shadow, because now you're taking the box shadow and you're basically canceling out that original translate X and translate Y. Back in the browser, refresh, and we can see now you click on it and the box shadow is actually moving, but since it's so, you know, it's uh, happening so quickly, um, if not at the same time, you don't actually notice it. Right, so a nice little trick there to give us that easy push button effect. And that's basically all you need to do to create one of these 3D buttons. Now, when it comes to uh, having different styles or different colors for the button itself, that's quite straightforward. So you can think of the button class as the primary class. It uses the blue color, right? So you might want to set this color to be your primary color of the website or project. But if you want a secondary or tertiary color, you simply add modifier classes to the button class. Okay, so let's do that right now. Let's define a second class here called button dash dash secondary. Okay, for the secondary class, it's going to be quite straightforward. I'm just going to, I'm going to copy and paste my pink color here. So we simply need to redefine those variables because these variables here, are now going to replace the above ones and get used down in the background color and the box shadow. So that's how we're able to essentially give us this reusable effect of the active pseudo class down here in the box shadow and obviously use variables to give us that effect. So quite a neat trick here. Now we can simply create a new button now and give it or give it that secondary class. I'm going to be showing you a button tag instead this time. I'll give this a type of button and we can make this say something like contact us. Now the class is of course going to retain the button. Okay, so a button class, but also adding the button dash dash secondary to add a modifier, a bit of, you know, spice on top of the regular class to give us that secondary color. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, and we get that secondary button right there. And it works just like the original. Okay, so there you go. That is how to create your 3D buttons in HTML and CSS. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.